Hey, Miss Jan, how are you? Hey, Miss Singh, I'm great. Happy Dude, to be here. I'm glad that you're here, too. And I'm super excited about this idea that you have for a new series of programs. Oh, this is wonderful. You gave me this book. Dude, and show little me that did book you know. Kid Activists. True tales from childhood of childhood from champions of change. Right, that's and, really, there and that's are, what we need today. Yeah, there mm -hmm. are a lot of kids in this book, it's dude. Really that's exciting. cool. I wonder, maybe hold up the cover again, and I can see if I can pick any of them out without looking at their names. I see their names, but I think the guy with the pride flag that has to be Harvey Milk. Maybe it is. I'm checking. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think that, you know what? I wouldn't have been able to pick out any of the other ones. Dr. Malala? King! Malala. But yeah. I wouldn't have been able to pick her out. Unfortunately, I did not say her name because I don't know how to pronounce it. But yeah. it's Malala? All right, cool. Mm-hmm. Malala. But Alexander Hamilton? Hamilton? He's, he's yeah. enjoying a resurgence He of really is. There's yeah. that whole thing about Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but there. This is just some of the people in this book. Okay, okay, they're, that's they're cool. not all represented on this. Yeah. Cover. Oh, that's but so cool. This is a fantastic book, dude. And well, it is in some libraries. It is in some libraries, yeah. and it'll soon be in ours. Yay! Because we've commandeered that copy for a professional collection. So they're true tales of childhood from champions of change. And which champion so, of change are you going to talk about today? I am starting off with somebody whose birthday is being celebrated. Yes. Yes. Can you guess who it is? I know who it is because he's one of my most favorite people in history. Martin Luther King Jr. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Yes, yeah. indeed. All right. Oh, cool. So yeah. you ready to hear the story? Oh yeah, totally, cool. totally. Yeah. And oh, before I forget, oh my gosh. because I will forget, we have a lot of wonderful yeah. resources about Martin Luther King. Yeah. And this. what an amazing man! What yeah. an amazing brave. Have you ever been to Washington D.C. to the memorial? I have not. Dude, it's it's yeah. like I've been to D.C. before it was up and then since, and it is just, it just takes your breath away. I went to D.C. when I was a teenager. Oh, okay. You need that to go back. Many years ago. You need to go back. I do need to go yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this yeah. summer. Yeah, maybe this yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Let's hear about Dr. Here King. This is my bookmark. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. Big words, big changes. Martin Luther King Jr. was the voice of the American Civil Rights Movement. He emerged as a leader during the Montgomery bus boycott. That's something you can look up and learn about. And he helped organize the 1963 March on Washington where he gave his legendary speech. I have a dream. Have a dream. You know who marched on Washington? Judy Garland. Did she really? Yes, she did. Yeah, it's amazing. I know. Good for her. Yep. Not only was she beautiful and talented. I, but she really but cared. But she cared. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Right. He fought for racial equality and human rights, and his activism helped to bring about the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Those are important yep. things. As a kid, though, he was just little Mike. The middle child of three, living in a big house with a large garden in a middle-class black community in Atlanta, Georgia. Little Mike's father, who liked to be called Daddy King, was a preacher. So was his grandfather. When Little Mike was born in 1929, both men prayed that the boy would follow in their footsteps. Little Mike's mother, Mama King, was a school teacher but she quit her job when she got married because in those days, married women were not allowed to be teachers. She was also a talented musician and she insisted that her children take piano lessons, but they were not always enthusiastic about practicing. One time they played a joke on their teacher. Little Mike and his big sister convinced their younger brother to loosen the legs on the piano. Oh my stool. gosh. When their teacher sat down, <clears throat> She went crashing to the Oh my floor. gosh. Martin Luther King remembered his early childhood as being full of love 
He later said that he had been wrapped up for him in a Christmas package. He grew up with a feeling of somebodyness, a sense that he mattered. But the larger world sent him a very different message. Little Mike, or ML as he was later known, lived in the American South at a time when black people had very few rights. White people in power had created laws to keep society segregated. Segregated means that black people and white people were kept apart, kept different from each other. Black people were forced to sit in separate areas on buses and at restaurants. They had to use separate bathrooms and water fountains. They couldn't swim in public pools with white people or go to school with white people. These segregationist policies were known as Jim Crow laws. Growing up, ML's best friend was a boy whose parents owned a store across the street. They played together every day. ML's friend was white, and when they started school, they were split up. ML was sent to the school for black children, and his friend attended the school for white children. His friend no longer came around very much, and when the boy's mother said they had to stop playing together, they did. ML was shocked, but his mother was not. She explained the history of black people in America. She told him about slavery and segregation, and she told him that there was nothing natural about racial discrimination. You are as good as anyone, she said. Yet, Despite the racism that surrounded them, ML and his siblings had many happy times in their childhood. They liked football and baseball. ML had a paper route and saved his money. He wanted to be a firefighter when he grew up. ML knew his parents believed in him, and he saw his father push back against inequality. Daddy King had a history of activism, as had his father before him. They had organized voter registration drives and been leaders in the Atlanta branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Now we call it NAACP. Daddy King resisted through smaller daily acts as well. He used elevators marked whites only, and he refused to ride the city's segregated buses. He told his children to avoid supporting segregated businesses. One day, when a police officer called him boy, Daddy King interrupted him. He said, that is a boy, pointing to ML. I am a man. Another time, ML and his father went shoe shopping, and the clerk told them to move to the Negro section at the back of the store. Daddy King refused. We'll either buy shoes sitting here, or we won't buy shoes at all. As they walked away, Daddy King said, I don't care how long I have to live with this system, I will never accept it. ML never accepted it either. Like his father, he believed that all people were created equal and that segregation violated God's will. When he was 15, ML traveled to Georgia to take part in a spub. That's all right. And I don't know. <laughs> to take part in a public speaking contest. And he won. <clears throat> But on the bus ride home, the driver insisted that he and his teacher give up their seats for white people. Oh, ML refused. Doesn't that make you sick? It does. <clears throat> yeah. ML refused. The driver threatened to call the police, but ML would not budge. Finally, his teacher persuaded him to stand at the back of the bus for the long ride home. He never forgot that incident. It was the angriest I've ever been in my life, he wrote later. ML skipped ninth grade and started high school early, but at first, he was not a good student. He was more interested in clothes than he was in studying. Some of the other students called him Tweed because of his fancy suits. He liked to dance and play cards, which his father considered to be sinful. Yeah, that's right. They were Baptists, right? They were. Yeah, yeah. ML didn't agree with many of his father's ideas about religion. For example, he did not view the Bible as the literal truth like his father did. And after starting college at only 15 years old, he rebelled. He decided that he would become a lawyer instead of a preacher. That way he could battle for African Americans' equal rights in the courtroom, like the NAACP attorney Thurgood Marshall. 
But at age 18, ML changed his mind and decided to enter the ministry after all. He realized that he could use his position as minister to work for racial justice. His father was thrilled. ML gave a trial sermon in his father's church, mm -hmm. Ebenezer Baptist Church on Sweet Auburn Avenue mm -hmm. in Atlanta, the street ML had grown up on, and it was a great success. Soon after, ML left Atlanta to attend the Crozier Theological Seminary in Pennsylvania. Yeah. During his three years there, he studied hard. He practiced his sermons in front of a mirror, developing the skills and style that would later help him touch the hearts and minds of millions of people. He graduated at the top of his class. ML moved to Boston, Massachusetts, where he continued his studies and met a young woman named Coretta Scott. They fell in love and got married in her hometown in Alabama. Life in Boston was good, but they both wanted to fight the segregation in the southern United States. They felt called to return to Alabama. We had the feeling that something remarkable was unfo unfolding in the South, and we wanted to be on hand to witness it, he said later. He was right, but he could not have predicted the significance of their decision. The following year, Rosa Parks' refusal to give up her seat helped spark the Montgomery bus boycott, which Martin Luther King Jr. helped to organize. He soon emerged as a central figure in the American Civil Rights Movement. He led protests and organized voter registration drives. He wrote books and articles and gave over 2,000 speeches. He emphasized civil disobedience, breaking unjust laws as a way of fighting for change, and he was arrested more than 20 times. In 1964, he became the youngest man to be awarded a Nobel Peace Prize. And although he was assassinated at the age of 39, his powerful words continue to have an impact today. As a child, Martin Luther King Jr. loved listening to sermons. That man had some big words, Daddy, he once said. When I grow up, I'm going to get me some big words. And he did. I gotta say, like, every time I hear Dr. King's story, it just chokes me up, man. Like, it does. <laughs> like, well, I know, I know. Here we are. Now, welcome. <laughs> this is Miss Ng and Miss Jan. Get emotional. Uh, but it's hard. It's hard because he was an incredible, brave man. And right. his grace and his ability to still stay peaceful, right. you know? Right. Uh, that's. I think that would have been a very hard thing yeah. to uh, forgive. And he didn't people. run away from uh, from the challenge. I mean, there he was up in Boston where things were, at least on the outside, better, you know, because things were horrible in the South. And, uh, and uh, to go back, you know, right. to go back there. Uh, one of the things that I that I just found out about him not too long ago, maybe like a couple years ago, is um, both he and his dad did change their names to Martin in honor of uh, uh, Martin Luther, the Protestant reformer. Oh, you know, okay. yeah, who was an interesting figure. But uh, so anyway, I, I just thank you for sharing that because uh, Dr. King, Dr. King, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that celebration is coming up. It is. It is. And uh, every day we could we can live our lives like Dr. Right, King did. Right. And I recommend that um, if you're interested that you get the book and actually read all of the words yeah. that he spoke mm -hmm. on that day. And that's a beautiful book. That's Peter Nelson's. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a very nice book. And the other thing yeah. is, like, he was a man just like just like any other human, and he had frailties and he had um you know areas in which you know he had to work on like we all do we all make mistakes and, and so and, yeah. what that shows us is like each one of us can we do what dr king did yeah because because he was just a human being but he loved and he cared and he just kept on trying right and we need we need more people to act as dr king did today right oh okay so, <laughs> Yeah, so, so uh, keep in touch. We have a lot of uh, 
people who were activists and yeah. started out. With I'm being so excited. Well, thank you for starting off with yeah. one of my most most favorite ones. Is is Malcolm X in there? I just wondered, just because I I love Malcolm X as well. I didn't know if Malcolm was in there. When I was in seminary school, I went to Pittsburgh Seminary. He went to Crozier. Um, in fact, Fred Rogers went to Pittsburgh Seminary. And one time when I was right. in class, somebody ran upstairs. And we were all, I mean, I was the youngest one there by about 10 years. I mean, I mean, there was most people in my seminary class were in their 30s and, or 40s and 50s at that time. Came, ran upstairs and said, Mr. Rogers is here, Mr. Rogers is here. And like we all flew down as fast as we could because he came exciting. to visit one day. But um, uh, in seminary, I had to take a book called Malcolm and Martin, uh, uh, a class called Malcolm and Martin, and I, I love them both. Well, I, I, yeah. wish, I wish he, he were in this, but he's not. Yeah, but that's we all have right. Lots of wonderful lots of great people, people to get to. Yeah, thank yes. so, you, Miss yes. Thanks for I listening. I love you. Love you too. Bye.